Which produce item do you spend the most money on still at the grocery store? Guten gardening, everybody! You know, almost exactly one year ago, we released a YouTube Shorts video where we asked you to make a bite-sized self-sufficiency pledge. Check it out. How to make a bite-sized self-sufficiency pledge. Grab your old grocery receipts or check your transactions in your financial app. We use Mint. Now scan those transactions for all the produce that you buy. Now check your fridge or pantry for the produce that you already have in stock. Now compare those lists. Which ones are you eating regularly and which ones are you not? For the items that show up that you are eating regularly, ask yourself, can I grow that? Check out your grow zone to confirm what you can grow. Unless you're growing indoors as well, some produce may not be a perfect fit for your zone. And then tune into your gardening mentor every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for new content. And since that short came out, we've also released a couple of different community posts where we ask what kinds of things you could take off of your shopping list and grow from home. Well, it's the beginning of a brand new year here in 2023, which means many of us are considering which seeds we're gonna start, and it's getting close to that time. Here in Zone 5, Wisconsin, we just started our onion seeds. We've got a lot going on. We have a lot of decisions to make, and I'm gonna take you with me today as I head out to a couple of grocery stores, and I'm gonna look in that produce section and show you some of the crazy prices that are out there. And I'm gonna ask you to do a couple of things. One, I'm gonna ask you to think about what you could potentially be growing at home that you could remove from your shopping list. And I'd love for you to tell us in the comments what your most expensive produce purchase right now, like a consistent produce purchase is. And that's something that maybe we can consider removing. Because I can tell you, I'm sitting here thinking, I can cut my own costs by doing X, Y, and Z. And I'll give you a couple of examples of things that we're currently not producing enough of, and some of them, it makes sense for us to go ahead and grow more. And others, well, we have some decisions to make about what makes the most sense in our limited growing space. Let's check out this Walmart to see what I'm talking about. By the way, when it comes to the few fruits and vegetables that we still need to buy, we buy organic. Now that's our decision. We understand that that raises the cost to some extent, but we've also done a video where we talked about the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So you should check out that video if you wanna understand more of our reasoning. Now, not all the vegetables I'm gonna show you today are organic, but I think you can get a clear picture of what I'm talking about. I thought most of you would probably be familiar with or have a Walmart nearby, so the prices like this 328 for a bag of non-organic potatoes, like these prices are going to make sense. And when I say make sense, I don't mean make sense like you should be paying this much. I just mean that they're probably pretty familiar to you. So, you know, a single orange for about 90 cents a piece, apples for about $2 a pound. You know, it's interesting, if we're talking about the vegetables and fruits that we still purchase here, I would say the number one, is probably apples. Oof, look at those oranges. Because, well, we have some apples coming in, but we don't have any trees that are far enough along that we're getting enough production that we can replace everything. And I would imagine that many of you are in the same boat as us. I mean, right now, what we're predominantly having to purchase from the store are some of these fruits. And when you start to see the cost here, you start to have to question whether or not it makes sense for you to be growing some of these vegetables, and these are 98 cents for a pound of regular carrots. Does it make sense to buy some of these vegetables still, or does it make sense to plant them and grow them? Because if I'm gonna be relying on these older vegetables, the quality of these vegetables, and for $1.52 a piece there, or almost $1.50 per pepper, when I grew so many peppers this year, am I gonna be reliant on these or am I going to make my decision to say, well, this is not cost effective? And a large part of this discussion comes down to space for sure. I mean, I want high quality food. Look at these collard greens. They are rotting, they are flimsy, they are wilted, but are they cost effective enough to plant in our garden space? Well, our collard greens last typically up through December at the very least. I've still got some outside right now, as a matter of fact. And so to me, that's kind of what goes into this decision-making process. That, and of course, availability and quality of what I could potentially get if I were reliant on going to the store. All right, look at this bok choy. I've got some growing inside my indoor growing area right now. That's $3 for, 
I, I don't even know what to call this. It's wilted, it's not crisp. Those leaves at the top that are usually so beautiful, I don't think it's worth it to go to the store and try to buy that or, or these cucumbers. Look, cucumbers, for us anyway, the last two seasons have been fantastic. And when I look at these, I, I try to find the one that I might want to eat. I can't find anything in here that's not wilted or old. And so I have to ask myself, is this something that I should grow more of? These carrots, for example, you know, this is one of the things that we still have had to purchase. Actually, we just bought our first bag of carrots just the other day and we paid about $7 for six pounds. Well, is that something that makes sense for me to try to get in here and add more of in our garden space? Because if we look at our three by six raised bed that we typically grow carrots in, that's 18 square feet. And let's just say I can fit maybe 300 carrots in there. For us, I would say at most, we're not the best at growing carrots. At most, we're probably looking at maybe 40 pounds of carrots. Well, at $7 for six pounds, that means we're talking about $40 worth of carrots growing in that one bed. Does it make sense to try to expand that out or does it make more sense to grow a vegetable that's going to be more valuable? For example, this sweet potato, which currently this organic sweet potato is $3.79 a pound and I weighed it almost two pounds. We're talking about nearly $8 for two pounds. I'd rather plant that in that bed than necessarily expanding the amount of carrots that we're growing. So that's part of that decision process about what we need to take off our receipts which one would be more valuable. Our garlic crop failed last year. That's why we did a video on the failure of the crop. We also are planting a very different type of garlic this year, but $2 for two cloves here that don't even look good. Does it make sense for us to try to replace all of our garlic? I think so. The spinach, I mean, spinach is so easy to grow. It's so quick to grow. And when you're looking at $5 for a pound of spinach that, I mean, this actually looks pretty decent, but who knows how long that's been off of the plant itself. It's lost a lot of nutritional value. I mean, this baby spinach here, $4 for eight ounces. I really think some of these things that don't take up a ton of space make sense to try to remove. If you're somebody like us who loves a good green smoothie and you want the carrots, you want the spinach, look at it, see which one makes the most sense that you could potentially remove that would be cost effective, that wouldn't actually require you to replace the space of something that is even more valuable. That's actually gonna cost you more in the long run. I almost burst out laughing when I saw this cauliflower, $5 per head. This one is about the size of the palm of my hand, $5. Is this something that you buy often that you could replace from your receipt? Look at that, it's got the, the black stuff forming on it already. We got some limp celery. Think about what it is that could be that single item that you could potentially start to replace. Maybe it's something that you're in a colder climate that works really well in the cooler weather, like the broccoli here. Or maybe it's a fruit that you love. I mean, who wants to spend $6 for a couple of ounces of strawberries when you can grow them vertically, when you can grow them in those smaller spaces? All right, I'm gonna interrupt this video briefly to do our 18th giveaway in our 31 days of Guten Gardening, Gardening Gift Giving. Are you ready for another fun giveaway? Lots of entrants. Remember, if you wanna be entered into our next giveaway, leave a comment on this video or on one of our community posts between now and the next video, and you'll be entered in to win. Let's go ahead and see what today's prize is. Well, we got such a positive reaction to our last giveaway that we're gonna do the same thing once again. We're gonna let you pick from any of the prizes we've given away so far. So if you go down into the description of this video, you will see a list of all the prizes we've given away and you can pick one and that's gonna be what we send your way, whoever the winner is today. All right, folks, let's go ahead and see who winner number 18 is. Remember, we have 13 more giveaways still to go. All right, our winner for today, number 18 is Kimberly Lamontia. Congratulations, Kimberly. I hope I said your name correctly. Folks, go ahead and leave a congratulations for Kimberly in the comments. Remember, don't say her name so she can be surprised when she finds out she has won. And Kimberly, when you see that you've won, leave a comment on this video and we'll be in touch to let you know how we'll get that shipped out to you as soon as possible. Congratulations once again. 
let's go ahead and head back to our video. How about this? Keep it really simple. Instead of paying $3 for some radishes that you can grow in 35 days, give that a try. Make that your next vegetable. Now, I said this a minute ago, but I want to make this very clear. One mistake I don't want to make is replacing something like, I mean, these cherry tomatoes, I get so many tomatoes, they produce really well. They give us a ton of value in the way that we can process them. As I'm making my decision, I'm asking myself, what are the most high value crops that I can put in, that I can add to my garden, that's going to help me reduce my overall expenditures outside, improve my yields, improve my harvests, that I'm still gonna be able to feed my family well. And if I have to find something that is organic or something that is community sourced, then I'm gonna go out of my way in that way to find an orchard nearby if I need to buy things in bulk to help reduce my costs. What I don't wanna be reliant on is produce that's old, that's not going to add value. That's where that planning ahead for this coming spring comes in. By the way, it isn't just store-bought produce that we're trying to remove our dependency on. There are other things that we're also removing from what we have to buy. Vanilla extract is one of them that we're gonna do some work with. That stuff's expensive. But we've got a whole list of items that we're making ourselves now that we've already removed our dependency that we no longer buy from the store so that we don't have to keep getting hit with all this sticker shock. I mean, this used to be $5, it's gone up. Oh, 20% already. If you'd like to see some content on some of the things that we've stopped buying from the store beyond produce, let us know in the comments. We have a whole bunch of items that we're now making from scratch or using what's in our pantry to truly reduce or even remove our dependence on outside production, outside sources. And that's made a huge difference for us as these prices have continued to climb. Now's the time to think about what makes the most sense to be growing in your garden. Where are you spending that money? Where can you transition away from paying for fruits and vegetables that might not even be high quality and transition it to your space? What can you grow more of? It doesn't have to be a complete reversal of, I've been buying all of one product, but now I'm not gonna buy any from the store. Get there, whatever it takes. If it's gradual, if it's immediate, that's fantastic. But find a way that you're not spending so much money on all that produce at the store, that limited variety, that produce that you may not even find high quality when you can take it on yourself to grow more of your own. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's video. We hope you got a little bit of a fire underneath you to get this going. We're coming up into our spring season before you know it here in Zone 5, Wisconsin, and I can't wait to grow more of our own food. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.